Today we're going to show you how to fix those dusty models with common items you probably have laying around your house. Spiky bits. A lot of times if you're working with bigger scale miniatures, you don't have a proper way to display them. So you leave them out and exposed to all the dust and pet dander and things like that. And month after month, sometimes into the years, you don't realize that, hey, it's getting dust on there. So one of the easiest ways before we get into how to actually remove the dust is keeping dust and debris, debris from actually accumulating on your model. So one of the easiest ways to do that is of course the traditional canned air right here. You can get this pretty much anywhere. I don't know if it's restricted in Europe because it's aerosol and all that stuff. Uh, Europe seems to be a lot smarter than, than here in America when it comes to the environment and such. However, if you can't get that, uh, they have little dusters from uh, Swiffer and those actually work pretty well too, but you wanna be a little bit more careful because you're actually touching your models as you Swiffer the surfaces and stuff like that but using the canned air dusters to just kind of spritz your models which I, tr I try to do once at least a month it's probably more like two months on the bigger stuff there just to kind of kick up the dust and everything and then usually the next day i'll go through and i'll actually swiffer the base of all the shelves and everything around it to kind of gather that up also too if let's see if we can turn it if you have some display cases you can always remove your models out of there and swiffer the glass on the bottom probably about once a year they they don't keep a hundred percent of the dust out but for the most part uh they do a really good job keeping dust off your models there so just pull your stuff out give them a quick spritz and then put them back in your cases now if you already have, if you have a problem, <laughs> if you've gone too far and you've left your models out and they've accumulated dust, and you're like, crap, I spent all this money, all this time and effort painting them. As long as your models were matte coated or sealed, you can probably still fix the situation. So let me show you this right here. This is a Reaver or excuse me, a Revenant Titan from the Eldar. And there you can see it was left out for about a period of a year, exposed to dust, dander, dogs, not really cats, but dogs. <laughs> We've got these Titans back. I actually painted these myself uh, way back in the day, learning from Kenny before he went on to YouTube over, you know, of course, Next Level Painting. So now we're gonna save these bad boys and I'm gonna show you once you've gone too far, how to bring back your models from a dusty death. So you're gonna need three major things to fix these models. First off, again, is uh, your electronics duster because you're gonna wanna get the bigger chunks off of these miniatures, uh, bigger chunks of dust off these miniatures so we can kind of fix them up and tighten them up. Second off, you're going to want some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, this is 91%. This seems to work just fine. I think I've had this for a while here. And you're also going to need an airbrush. There really isn't getting any way around it. In this particular case, my small airbrush, uh, my small reservoir airbrush, it's not very small. This is a hardened Steamback uh, Infinity 2-in-1 Custom <laughs> that... Uh, we've got loaded up here ready to go and i'll explain a little bit more about that here in a minute so first off like i said just grab your model there it is you can see it a little bit more detail it's uh yep that was a finger hey is there dust on it yep there sure is <laughs> kind of gross so like i said the very first thing you're going to do and this is probably going to be a little loud so hopefully it doesn't i'm trying to shield the microphone a little bit but you're just going to spritz and try to get the bigger chunks off <laughs> Now, real quick, you want to definitely exercise care. There's warning labels on the back of these canned airs. Now, also, it's going to get cold. If, you, if you're not familiar with how canned air works, it's going to get cold. That's actually condensation right there. It's very, very cold to the touch. So you may want to double fist cans. I got a backup cam right here because after you, depending on the size of your miniature, you're actually going to run out of the ability to spray from one can. So picking up another can while the other can kind of... Um, yeah, I guess cools off is the not the right term because it's already cool. That's that's physics. Just giving that time to recover and then have this other can here to spray down uh, the rest of your miniature and such because I got down to the lower half of this and I really couldn't do much more. 
Now you can get in here and you can do like get really tight on this and blow off specific areas, but you really don't need to. This at this juncture, you just want to get off the biggest chunks of dirt and debris that are on here because we're actually going to be able to take it to the next level cleaning from here. Now we're going to make the magic happen and actually fix all the rest of these uh, this dusty surfaces here. So you're going to grab your airbrush, throw about 50% water in this beast. This is where having a small reservoir actually kind of hampers the progress, although I think this can be upgraded on the h &S. I just did not because I like to keep my, I like to keep my stuff tight. Then we're going to grab our alcohol and mix about 50% into here, and I don't want to go too close to the top. But I don't want to get close because we're going to do some backfills and stuff. And that actually will discolor my surface. So make sure, and I cannot stress this enough, I'm just going to do a couple quick spritz here. And then I am going to open up the windows, put on a mask when I'm blowing this stuff. Because it is actually really, really terrible for you to atomize and breathe in. So we're going to give it a couple quick back flushes there to try to mix it. Actually, I have a buster brush here. I'm going to rinse it off in the water. Mix this up, make sure you got a good mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. And now, in a very controlled manner, we are gonna come across the top here and start pretending like we're base coating a miniature or we're laying down a primer coat. That is exactly what we're gonna do. And this is actually going to, in some ways, dissolve the dust, but also blow it off and prep the surface. Now this will only work if you have a matte coated miniature, if some sort of sealant is on your miniature. This otherwise will have a detrimental effect to your paint. It could still have a detrimental effect to your paint, but you need to do it very slow. So we're gonna do it slow. So you can see here, we're just going over top like we're doing a nice airbrush base coat and what that's doing is that's actually dissolving the dust and eating through it blowing it off in all sorts of manner between the airbrush action itself and the inherent makeup of the isopropyl alcohol now we're not getting crazy we're not getting we're not like coating it or anything like that now we give it a second to kind of air dry and then what you're going to come do is just grab you a paper towel and gently pad off the miniature the surface of it you don't want to drag it because you could get a loss of color but when you look at it there is let's see I don't know if you can see it here but there is all this area right here is brown where that dust and dirt and debris was actually there there you are going to get a little bit of lint on here but that's okay because what we're going to do is we're going to blow all of this back off after we hose it down we're going to blow it back off with the air and get it ready for the last step, which is uh, the full recovery of the model. So I'm gonna take the time to go through, I mean, you can already tell night and day between this thruster and this thruster right here. I'm gonna take the time, very carefully go through and hit all the surfaces of the miniature and just kind of pad air dry them using the proper protection for my face and also my surroundings. Now that we've got it all hosed down using constant pressure and not getting glick locks or Klingons anywhere, if you drop something out of your pot, make sure you try to deal with it almost immediately because you don't want a big streak running down the side of your big model. That, that can be a thing. So we're going to wait for this to dry and then we're going to hit, well I've been hitting with a little bit of air as we go too. Then we're going to get out our Model Master Clear Lacquer Gloss Coat. So we're going to hit it first with Gloss Coat all over the whole model, give it a nice solid coat, letting it air dry for about 10 to 20 minutes. That's going to actually lock in and protect what we've done already. And then we're going to bring it back down with something else for the very, very, very last step here. So double check all your work. Make sure you didn't miss any spots. Uh, if you're worried about lint, and lint is an issue, don't use a paper towel to dab off any areas. Maybe just leave it to air dry if you want. Oh, there's a spot I missed right there. But you just want to kind of babysit it at this point just to make sure you got a nice, solid, clean area. And you can, of course, hit it with a little bit of air to also dry it out. All right, now, hopefully you're not skipping ahead in these videos and just kind of sliding the bar because you're going to miss a very important point right here. 
So this, I hit this all with gloss varnish, right? Some of it didn't quite come out right. And you'll notice, I don't know if you can see, but right here, it looks like a little up by in front of these gems. It looks like there's a little bit of fuzziness and there is. And the way to fix this, and it could happen on any surface on at any point on here. You will notice that I did hit it with the gloss varnish. It's got a little, it's got sheen to it now. So we're good. But over here, the way to fix this, and if, it, if you have really stubborn dust, or maybe you just didn't apply enough mixture from your airbrush at the right pressure onto the surfaces that needed to be cleaned, it might be that uh, you just need to go back and do this a little bit more. So you just wanna take your airbrush and hose a little bit more of the liquid on here and get it to the point where it's not 100% dry you want it to be slightly like you can see that it's uh it looks wet basically it looks darker and wet but it's not like dripping or anything like that so it's kind of an in-between it takes a little bit there's a little bit of a learning curve to it but once you nail it you'll just nail it so i'll hit this with a little bit of my airbrush make it a little moist then immediately while it's still moist i'll take it outside and i'll hit it with the gloss varnish again and the reaction between the two will tighten it up and get rid of that. Now I'm not gonna do it here because I just wanna wrap this video up for you guys. But there's one last step that's very important and that is another coat of varnish. This time we're gonna be doing the Lusterless Flat by Model Masters. And the reason that you really need this, don't use the G-Dub stuff, don't use the Army Painter stuff. I mean, you could, I just haven't broken down the, the, um, the ingredients and stuff on it. I know it works with this stuff and I know you can get this stuff at most Walmarts most hobby towns out there so i just stick with what i know sometimes because we're all busy people <laughs> it's just time to get things done right so we're gonna hose this whole thing down with lusterless flat now if you have a miniature and it's like a display piece and you know you've already done the gloss we got a nice gloss coat around the rim of the base here i'm actually going to try to avoid the rim of the base because i want i want the rim to be kind of glossy then after you hit it with the matte varnish, I'm actually gonna come back with a brush and hit all the gems again with gold just to tighten those up too. But that's that's something that's just optional. It's just something you might wanna be aware of, uh, you know, as you're working on your miniature. So I'm gonna hit this with, with the dull coat now, bring it back down a notch, and then show you the difference from there. So now we've cut down the sheen a little bit, but there's still a little bit, it's more of like a semi-gloss or like a satin at this point. I can go ahead and let it dry up 100%, hit it with some more lusterless and that'll kill it a little bit more. But you do want a little bit of a protective coating on stuff like this just in case it happens again. And plus with such big miniatures, it's probably not a bad idea just to have that little bit of extra protection right there. I hit it a little hard on the, the torso right there so you can see where it is still a little bit more shiny but that's okay we just wanted to wrap this up but it gives you a good starting point to work and actually fix your miniatures scale is important if you're using smaller miniatures at the same time you want to you know uh, exercise a little bit more caution where you can be yeah, a little bit more open on the throttle on your airbrush when you're working with this bigger stuff right here so i'm going to go clean out my airbrush so that uh, don't leave that isopropyl alcohol in the seals and get another matte coat on this and be done with this project here. So hopefully that was helpful. Any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, this is, uh, ha I've had to clean quite a few figures, unfortunately, till I learned to, hey, just dust your stuff every now and then. And, uh, well, it won't, it won't end badly for you, I, I, I promise. So uh, follow those tips. Hopefully you can clean up those dirty. And remember too, I don't know if I'm gonna put it in the title or mention it, uh, this actually fix crazing too. So if you use matte coat and you get that frosted look, the same exact procedure will fix uh, crazing as well on your miniatures. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's kind of a double dip little skill just to have in your hobby toolbox there uh, to work with whenever you need it. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed our how to fix dirty dusted miniatures and crazed miniatures surprise <laughs> make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all these posts